Hi guys and welcome back. It's the Chinese New Year in my home country and to usher in this auspicious celebration, I thought of painting some koi fishes. In the Chinese culture, koi fishes symbolizes prosperity and good fortune. And we love decorating our homes and even greeting cards with koi fishes. So let's start painting some of these beautiful fishes, shall we? To start off, here I'm mixing a very light wash of grey to paint in the shadows of the fish. After pre-wetting the area of the body with clean water, paint in the shadows. Doing this step will help to bring out the dimension and shape into the fish. So basically, the shadows will lie on both right and left ends of the body and around the fins. The center of the body will have the highlights, so we will just keep them untouched paper white. Once the first layer is completely dry, we will now proceed to put in some colours. For a soft finish, we will do wet on wet by first pre-wetting the koi fish body again. Then I'm mixing in some bright orange and paint in a small patch on the body area like so. Notice that harsh edges will form. This means that the paper has already dried out. So if this happens not to worry, just take a clean brush and gently blend off the harsh edges. Since I would like to have a softer blending of colors, let's also pre-wet the other areas of the body. To give a more variety of colors, let's mix in a bit of red into the mixture. and drop them onto the orange paints that is still wet. Allow the red paints to slowly bleed into the orange paints. This will create a very soft and beautiful blend of colors for the koi's body. Allow yourself to play around with these two colors and paint in tiny patches of red and orange along the koi's body. And then drop in some fine lines on the fins to give it more details. Let's repeat the same steps for the second coil. If you like to paint along in real time, the full length video will include me talking you through each step of the video. This is available only on Patreon. When the paper is completely dry, we are now ready to paint in our background and this is where things start to get interesting. Thoroughly wet the background areas with a large brush. We will be using the same wet on wet technique as we did earlier. Prepare a mixture of turquoise blue colour. Since we will be painting over a large area, be sure to prepare enough mixture to cover the entire paper. 
Using a large brush, here I'm using size 10, carefully paint around the koi fish body. At this stage, try to work around as quickly as you can before the paper starts to dry, otherwise you might end up with some harsh, strong edges. Therefore, an important tip here is to make sure that you use a big brush because this will easily help to cover a large area in just a few strokes. To soften the outer area, use a head brush to blend it out and allow the paint to spread out on its own. Feel free to rotate the paper around to let the paints flow. For extra contrast, here I dropped in some thick orange paints onto the wet area before it dries out. This gives the blue waters an extra kick and makes it more interesting. Wash off your brush just with clean water, splatter them in to further enhance this effect. Feel free to darken certain areas to give it more depth. Before moving on to the next area, be sure to re-wet the white area again before proceeding to paint. This will help keep the paper wet and allow for soft and smooth colour transition. Now we can see that the fins have a very sharp edge around it and I would like to soften this area. So with a clean moist brush, gently pull in some of the blues into the white areas of the fins like so. This will help to create an almost transparent area of the fins. feel that the fish still looks a little flat, so I'm going in to further define the shadows and bring in some dimension. Now, this step is entirely optional. I wanted to add in some greens to the waters to help illustrate the weeds and plants which are under the water. To do this, ensure that the paper is entirely dry. Paint in green paints onto your desired area and blend out the edges. I continue to add a few more greens on areas which lack details. So this is up to you where you'd like to place them. And this is the finished painting. This is a very good practice for wet on wet techniques and I hope that you'll give it a go. Good luck painting and I'll see you next week. Bye!